guys. So this is problem number 19 from chapter um, chapter 4 from the section on node voltage with dependent sources. So in this problem we have a 160 volt independent voltage source connected in series with a 10 ohm resistor. At this node we have a 100 ohm resistor, a 30 ohm resistor that's connected in series with a dependent voltage source of value 150I delta. So the value of this voltage source takes its, um, its value from this current, which is in the direction of the voltage rise this way of the current I delta. So what we want to do is we want to find the uh, value of the voltage or the value of the power dissipated by this dependent voltage source which I'm going to call V delta, since we don't know what it is. So to start, we have to find the node. Um, we're going to use the node voltage method to solve this problem because um, it makes sense. Um, actually, we could choose the mesh current as well. It would work. But we're going to use the node voltage because this section is on the node voltage. So um, this node has three branches connect to it, connected to it, so the, and this node also has um, three branches connected to it. So we can use, choose each either one as um, our node that we want to write the node voltage, um, the node, nodal equation at, and then the other one is the ground. But since this one is closer to the physical ground, let's call this node the ground and our reference node. And this one, we don't know where it is, let's just call it V sub X. So now we're going to write our node voltage equation at V sub x. So node voltage at V of x. That's going to be the sum of all the currents away from the node. So the first current, this direction, is going to be V x minus 160. V x minus 160 divided by 10. Now, V over R is a current, so that's a current term. That makes sense. And then this node is going to be Vx over 100. And then this node is going to be Vx. Oops. Vx minus 150 I delta over. So we got a, a, a resistor here. And the first time I did this, I just completely overlooked this resistor, but we've got two in series. So we add them together, and that's 50. And all of that is going to equal zero. So we have one equation and two unknowns, I delta and Vx. That means we need a constraint equation. So we need that I delta. I delta, notice that is in the direction of the voltage rise is from ground to up. That means if we're going to write the equation for Vx with reference to ground, it's going to be negative. It's in the opposite direction, the way we define the ground to be. So I delta is equal to negative Vx over 100. Right? And that has to do, if we had taken this point as the ground, which we could have easily done, and I would challenge someone in the YouTube community to post a response video where you take this as the ground, um, that would be, you would um, come up with, well, you could write I delta as positive, and this would be your Vx. So that would be positive Vx, um, Vx over 100. So then instead, since we have this as the higher point of, of voltage potential, it's going to be a negative number. So now, let's just do this part, simplify that into... Um, into just one in terms of Vx. So I'm going to go over here and do the simplification. We've got negative 150 over 50, which is negative 3. So negative 3i delta is equal to negative 3 times negative, negative Vx over 100. So that's really 3 over 100 Vx. So, I'm going to replace this with 3 over 100 Vx. And this, I'm going to write as a separate fact fraction. So this is Vx over 50 
and all that can be rewritten as 3 over 100 vx. Okay, so I know I'm really horrible at making mistakes on the chalkboard, so let me just double check to make sure I did it right. Okay, so 1 tenth, 1 one hundredth, 1 fifty, and 3 one hundredth. Okay, good. So now this is one equation and one unknown, and it's solvable. So let's group all our coefficients for vx. We have 1 over 10 plus 1 over 100 plus 1 over 50 plus 3 over 100. And that, and this 16 here, I'm going to bring on the other side, so all that's going to equal 16. Now, it's just a matter of algebra at this point. So, I'm going to double check myself. 1 divided by 1 tenth plus 1 divided by 100 plus 1 divided by 50 plus 1, 3, 3 divided by 100. So this is all equal to 0.16. So I'm going to go 16 divided by 0.16. And that tells me that Vx is 100 volts. So, now that we know what this is, this is equal to 100 volts, right? So then I delta is negative. So then I delta is really negative 100. Oh, negative Vx, so negative 100 over 100. So it's really negative 1 amp which means this V delta is really, has the value negative 150 volts. Okay, so P, P delta is going to be V delta times I delta. We know what V delta is, so we need to find I delta. This current is I, oh, I'm, I don't mean I delta, I mean I V delta, I sub V delta. I sub V delta. So the current going through the V delta, the dependent voltage source, is I sub V delta. And that's going to be, so I sub V delta, that's going to be Vx minus V delta over 50. The sum of these two, um, those two resistors. So we know Vx is um, 100. We know V delta is negative 1, negative 150. So negative times a negative is a positive. So that would be positive 150 over 50. And that's something you can do in your head. That's 250 divided by 50, which is 25, over 5, which is 5. So that's 5 amps. So therefore, power of V delta is going to be negative 150 volts times 5 amps which is negative 750 watts. And I'm going to take a second to double check. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's the answer to that problem. Um, all right, guys. Make sure to share, like, um, help each other. If you see a question that's posted that you can help with, you know, um, on the comments, please jump in. I mean, if I make mistakes, you know, I'm always grateful for the people who jump in to correct me. Because, um, you know, it's, uh, it's easy to make mistakes and stuff, a plus here, a minus there, etc. All right, guys, see you later.